Aloha and welcome guys to another episode of my High Country podcast. Uh, this episode i have um, on Oahu this time and I'm actually here for a um, second referral for an oral cancer issue I've been having and well it's a whole nother story we can talk about that and something else but uh, I took the drive out to the to the west side before I leave here to meet with a pretty interesting guy I've been following him around on uh, social media uh, <laughs> he's got his phone but anyway his name is uh John Mot- Motlaw is that a yep John Motlaw or John. Puya Motlaw Puya Motlaw hey welcome <laughs> Welcome to the welcome to the podcast. Thank you, thank you very much. Um, and we are out here in the hot part of Oahu. This is in the back part of Makaha Valley, right? Yep. In Manaolu, in the Mauna back Olu. of Makaha. Yeah, I didn't even know this. Uh, I didn't even know this gated community uh, existed way back here. Yeah, it's a hidden gem back here. <laughs> Nobody knows it's back here. You, you explained it. You explained it as what was it? The uh, ghetto fabulous. Ghetto fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> cool. But um, uh, so I I I just want to what I'm gonna get into into this podcast is um th- they've been having a lot of area area shooting here in 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 this Makaha region, and um uh, with my position on the state game commission, I've I've been um seeing or observing what's been what's been happening. Of course, I don't represent Oahu; I represent Big Island. But I've been seeing what's happening, and I've taken an interest. And usually, what I see is a lot of um. I see a lot of hunters complaining and showing up and stuff and screaming and yelling. But from you, I've seen something very different. I see someone taking action, doing stuff, doing things a little bit differently. And uh, so that's what I'm going to get into in this podcast. But before that, why don't you tell the people listening a little bit about yourself? You know, where you're from and what do you do? Um, you know, originally I was born in New Jersey. My dad was a doctor out here in Hawaii. So I used to go back and forth between my mom and my dad. And then when I finished college, I moved out here. And I've been out here for over 25 years. Um, since I moved out here, even when I was back in New Jersey, I was hunting as a teenager. And when I got over here, I just continued hunting. I uh, started off with getting dogs and pig hunting uh-huh. to moving up to hunting goats up in the cliffs. And um, from the hunting, I, I'm also a, a, a beekeeper and also a, a full-time, uh, well, not a full-time, but a commercial fisherman. And... Uh, I just love the outdoors, and as as a kid, being out here, I practically survived off the goats. <laughs> so that's why when I noticed the aerial shooting going on, that we had to stop this because it's just not right, uh-huh. and it's not Pono at all. <laughs> so that's why I got involved. Yeah. I've never been involved in anything like this before. It's the first time ever. Oh, yeah. A yeah. little bit, yeah, a little bit about your hunting. I, when, as I was pulling up in here, I, I drove up to your garage, and I saw all these beautiful mounts i mean pretty cool stuff and one in particular caught my eye you got one heck of a axis buck inside of there yeah <laughs> you want to tell what was the story behind that one um that axis is from molokai is a 32 incher yeah i got really lucky that was my third time ever hunting in molokai yeah and um it was during the rut and i seen this deer with like about 40 other deer and I just took a long shot, and I got lucky. <laughs> and he's hanging on the wall right now. Yeah. And you just you just got back from Molokai just uh, not too long ago, right? Just got back. We were up there hunting for a week. Just love being outer island where everything's clean and the hunting's good, and you know life is good. That's the real Hawaii, true Hawaii, <laughs> true Hawaii, right there. True, as opposed to where we are right now, where we're at right here on Oahu, yeah. where the DLNR is taking away from us over here <laughs> hunting, where they're supposed to be. You know, pro, uh, promoting, protecting, and um, preserving hunting. Uh-huh. They're, the DLNR hasn't been doing this over here. They've been doing opposite. They've been taking away from us uh-huh. hunters. So it's nice to go to an island where there's still abundance of game. <laughs> sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, totally. I, I go to I go to Lanai at least annual. Uh, try to go annually, and then I haven't been to Molokai in a long time. But it's very similar, right? These are two islands that have. Um, access deer on them and the, the locals pretty much live off of them like there's no it's expensive to buy beef or buy something else right everyone eats deer on those islands yes and and if if you kind of you know oahu is more civilized right we kind of have this uh we have the big urban city honolulu i think it's the 14th largest city in the u.s wow there's like a million people on this island maybe more already i'm not sure probably but a million people on an island that's like 
I don't know. I live on the Big Island. I don't know. You could probably fit two or three Oahu's on the Big Island as far as land mass. And yeah. my island's got 200,000. I think we just passed 200,000. But, um, yeah, so we're in this urban urban city. And then I know a lot of hunters here on Oahu, they just don't have the kind of opportunities here just because of, you know, just don't have the land or a lot of places have been, what's left is going to get wiped out maybe. Yeah, it's been taken away. They they travel. And yeah. we travel to <coughs> we travel to the other islands. And the uh, Lanai and Molokai, Molokai being one of them. And if you try to take away, try to take away deer on Molokai, I mean, what, how do the people over there? <laughs> oh, they're going to be angry. <laughs> they are going to be angry. They're already, at first they were, at first they were okay with the aerial goat shooting that they, oh, really? they at first they were. I was talking to actually the ranch security and um, he was saying uh, people at first, they were happy that the helicopter was coming to help with the goat problem. But then after mm. they found out that it didn't really help. They thought it was going to help the erosion, um, stop the erosion and the, and the, you know, the, the chocolate water that comes down into the ocean. But sure. that didn't stop it. And it's still continuing. So they said it was useless. Hmm. That, that maybe the landscape is kind of is what it is, you know. I mean, it's kind of, I always found it kind of interesting that the, um, that the erosion thing was always used um, against hunting because in some places, yes, maybe that is true. But in other places where it, these valleys are huge. They've been cut over thousands of years before right. any four-legged animals or two-legged man was ever here. And, you know, all that all that soil ended up into the ocean at some point. So there's right. some natural process here. And then maybe, you know, science, we may have a view on one way of how something is. And then we do it and then we find out maybe that wasn't everything. Maybe that wasn't entirely true. Yeah, we're not doing it the right way. Yeah, so yeah. I mean, there's a revis revisitation. At least, maybe over there, people I don't know, it's such a small community, they have a lot of control in kind of what happens there. But uh, when we come here to Oahu, it's very urban-centered. I think uh, I think people don't even uh, realize how, how urban Oahu is. And they come here thinking that there's this massive paradise of Oh, beaches and it won't be crowded and all this stuff and i think some tourists come here and they show up and they see just a miniature la is what they they get disappointed <laughs> is what they see <laughs> and it's then quite they a shock yeah and then they realize <laughs> they got to go to the other islands or you got to go maybe out to the countryside like we are we are here out on the west side right yeah, now and and even the country out here is going it's going fast yeah you know it's getting crowded um our water's running out oh. there's so much new houses that they're building and more people coming and sure. more people coming uh you know rooms running out for yeah. building it w we can't sustain ourselves in the future at this <laughs> rate that we're growing we put a million people on a small on a small rock in the middle of the ocean right i yep. mean at some point there's going to be there's going to be issues there's things yep. you maybe can't get around i don't know but um getting back to the interest interest of this episode this episode was um so we have uh hawaii has a history of doing a lot of aerial shooting of 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 game mammal species and in some cases you know these are places that are inaccessible or whatever and and they got to cut them down because you know they, they eat a lot of the vegetation and some people can't get to them but <coughs> places where i live on the big island pretty much everywhere i hunted is impacted in some way by aerial shooting or by fencing off and eradication in some fashion and literally everywhere i've hunted is like that um and i see it only spreading i see that that um loss loss of hunting opportunities and loss of public public grounds for people uh continuing further and i see you know to be quite honest on oahu i'm shocked to even see any goats here <laughs> like i think with what i've seen on big island i would think here they uh the environmental community and stuff would have already uh, stomped on hunters here and got rid of all of the hunting on this island um but they're trying to do they're that. They're trying. <laughs> they're trying. But it still persists. Like there, there's yeah. still there's still some hunting here. There's still small areas. Uh, we're going to be talking about goats primarily, um, here on the mountain tops where where there are still goats. And uh, how how many hunters do you think bow hunt here on this island? You think that's a good question. Goats? Um, for bow hunters, yeah, <laughs> maybe several hundred. Several hundred. Yeah. yeah, there's more gun hunters than bow hunters. Oh, really? Yeah, way more. Oh, okay. Way more. Yeah. So they only. Um, what are what are the areas of bow hunt here? I mean, how how much um, acreage do you think uh, are left here on a public uh, public bow hunt? Well, the only place that we have um, 
Well, we have uh, Makua Keao, yeah, which is public for bow hunting. Um, has a bow hunting season. It's uh, I believe it's six months long. Sure. Over there. Um, other than that, you can go up to Kwakala. It says they have a three month season over there for bow. I'm sorry, it's a six month season too. Yeah. Also over that there. That one is not. There's no goats over. Is that one of goats too? Um. That one. 2017, the last of the goats that you could reach had been killed. Oh, okay. They killed. There's <laughs> Probably. Yeah. So really, that's that's gone already. Mm -hmm. So the last place that we do have is Makua Keao. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. And that's going really fast. Um, not due to the aerial eradication yet in that section, but due to the fencing uh -huh. that they've put up. Also, uh, public pressure, when they opened it up 20 years ago to public hunting, that really lower the population down. Now they put the fence up and you know the fences are the the goats are trying to go through and they're getting stuck in the fence. Sure. We see the same thing on Big Island, which is yeah, when the goats have the right size horn on them, it's like a barb. They stick their head through it and then they get stuck and That's it. Some we let some we get out when we're actually there, but most of them are gonna die in that fence usually. So I've had like um hiking clubs send me pictures and Oh, know, really? Other hunters sending me yeah. pictures of goats that they that they see dead, or even that they're still alive in the fence, and and they take them out and they release them. Mm -hmm. So I've been getting quite a few pictures like that. Yeah, and we I've been sharing them with the public because yeah. not too much people know that this is happening yeah. in our mountains. Do you think? Uh, do you think the people who put the fence up actually care about the goats? That no, they get not at all. <laughs> they care. They care to kill them all. Sure, that's what they care about. Yeah. So <clears throat> across like. Uh, in in Hawaii, and I've explained it in previous episodes, we have, you know, we have areas of kind of like these native landscapes and the uh, hooved animals that eat these plants do uh, can threaten these, these native landscapes. But a lot of the landscape that we hunt that are left, like I think they fenced off pretty areas that are intact. I think they've done a job of that already. But the areas that we can still hunt that are outside of these fences... I think there a lot of them are highly modified areas as well. Like there's you know a lot of non-native grasses, a lot of um, it's not so much a native landscape anymore, and um, maybe the protection of it is not as critical. Like we could if we could keep animals anywhere on the island, it would be in these in these areas that that are not as sensitive, right. and those are areas that we have left to hunt. I, I see, and what I uh, what we um. What we're trying to do and what I try to do is areas that, that we can keep animals, figure out ways to keep them. But I get a huge I get huge pushback from our department on ever creating plans or anything like that for those kinds of areas. They just don't want anything on paper that keeps the future of any game animals here. Like if you guys can go right. hunt them and if you guys somehow kill them all when you're hunting, oh, well, big deal. They disappear. They're gone. Right. Sad as you. Your problem, not ours. Right. And honestly, I think I think a lot of the environmental community wishes that wishes for hunters to eradicate themselves. Well, if they need that, they need to open up certain areas to if allow access for the hunters. Sure. And that's what we've been working on. And actually, cool. this pa this coming Friday, we're actually opening up another access over here in Y and I mm -hmm. for the hunters. So I saw that. Yeah, I saw that you guys posted up on on YouTube. I saw you guys weed whack in a little area, this and that. But there was something that you were asking the department to do, right? Uh, well, following that. Yeah, the department asked us. To go, they gave us an area. Well, for four years, they were looking for an area for us. They couldn't mm -hmm. find an area. And then within 15 minutes, one of the members of the Waianae Community Board, within 15 minutes, found us an area. You mean an area for access is what you're asking for? Yes, okay. an area for access. So um, the DLNR had asked the Waianae Hunting Association if we can go and speak to those neighbors in that area where, we were g where the DLNR was planning on opening up access. Mm -hmm. So they gave <coughs> us an address to go to. We went to that address. We spoke to the, the neighbors. The neighbors were all cool. And then we got back with the DLNR, and we told the DLNR that, okay, we went and we spoke with them. Now they want to go speak with them, the DLNR. So next thing we know, we hear back from the DLNR, and they said that we don't want to put it over there, the access. Let's move it more back in the valley a little bit more. <laughs> so after you're all good, yeah. they tell you, oh, go somewhere else? Yeah, they tell us to go somewhere else. <laughs> okay. So they give us another address, and they said, you have to go find who the landowner is. So now they're making us do all the work. They would know, right? I mean, it's a TMK. They, I mean, they're the state. They should probably know. They should know. Yeah. Yeah, that's what they're getting paid to do. We have a, a person yeah. that's in charge of finding access 
Um, his name is Nick Vargas. He actually just got hired from the DLNR. They had somebody else previous. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm familiar, yeah. Yeah, so um, lucky I knew the landowner over there, which is Makaha Valley Farms. They're probably was, hoping you didn't. They, they were definitely hoping I didn't. <laughs> and I found, I already knew within five minutes who it was. Sure. Went and I, I act, drove to see him and I spoke with him. And he said, John, give him my number. And it's okay. You guys could put the access up over there on the Hunter check-in station. So I was like, great. And then the DLNR contacted um, the landowner over there from Macaw Valley Farms. And he spoke with them. Everything's set up for this Friday. We're going to go over there and get a Hunter check-in station wow. for Y&I. Wow. In and, uh, and the bottom I over mean, here. There. As far as you guys going there, getting a check-in station, you guys are going to clear an area or something? and then Yeah, we're going to clear another area because we already cleared an area previously. Yeah, so what happened to that one then? Um, we just had to start all over and move up the road Did a little you? bit. Oh. Yeah. Okay. They, finally, the DLNR didn't want it over there. They wanted m to move it up a little bit more. Okay. They've just been giving us problems from day one. they just constantly trying to delay things and delay things. And, <laughs> you know, we didn't even have a hunter check-in station in Waianae for several years. Uh-huh. You know, and somebody in the neighborhood decided to go build it and put it up. And it's just really unprofessional, you know. <laughs> So lucky last week they came, the DLNR came and put another hunter check-in station in the back of Waianae Valley, oh. and, which is respectable. They made it look really nice. So that's good because one of the problems the DLNR was saying is that hunters aren't taking out numbers from, you know, the goat herd and the pig herd. Mm -hmm. So that's why they need to do these eradication missions, which is not true. There's a lot of hunters in Waianae. They're pounding the mountain every day, mm -hmm. goats, pigs, constantly. Um, it's just the thing is there's no check-in station for these guys to mark down their catch. Yeah, yeah, sure. So that's just a, a bad excuse from the DLNR again, you know. Uh -huh. they, should be, they should be having the check-in station for us. So, and the guys, you know, the hunters too, they should be signing in. We've got to take some responsibility. So we I'm have to sure. take some, yeah. some responsibility because, I mean, I'm actually guilty of that being, when I was uh -huh. younger, I used to never sign in, you know. <laughs> But now when I'm older and I know it's important, I do sign in. And that's what I'm teaching all the younger guys. You know, let's sign in. Let's show the state that we are doing this and we are helping manage the animals. Because that's realistically, that's what we want to do. We want to manage. Absolutely. You know? No, That's I've, our I've, goal. Yeah, I've been around both sides, you know, kind of researching the environmental community. And I've read, I've read a whole bunch of academic papers of public hunting doesn't control animals in Hawaii. Literally, like you can go, you can go look these up. You can find them. These uh, PhD scientists, whatever, they come up and they, they find specific examples within our state where they say, "Oh, we've got rid of all the bag limits, uh, free for all," and yet uh, game populations still rise. And it is true. Like um, we have areas like Mauna Kea, classic example, is supposed to be eradicated. What uh, for that Palila court order and all of that. But we made no bag limits, and typically what hunters have done is. A lot of hunters only shoot rams. They only shoot males. Um, they don't want to go into the the very tough areas and, and shoot all the ewes and stuff like that. So the population does grow. If you only shoot all the males, the, the population still grows over time. And right. I think if the state if the state took a um, took some action and created a plan and told hunters, hey, this is how many ewes we got to take out of an area. This is how many rams or what the, what the number is and all these things. And if you don't hit that, then we're going to have to do something else. Yeah. But I think if you told them, maybe, just maybe it would be different, right? If we had some direction, a little yep. bit more management, active management in this, well, right? They're going to have to come up with a game management plan for that. <laughs> it's going to take some time, oh, you know? that's a whole other ball of wax. Like, this is something <laughs> like 20, 20 years? Maybe 20, maybe even over that. That hunters on, I know hunters on the Big Island that's been fighting for that. Yeah, 30 years. Management plan, yeah. yeah. T Tommy Medeiros is the original sure. starting this, yeah. I'm sure. Hero. And it's not like um it's not like hunters are asking for animals everywhere. Like we understand that there are sensitive areas. We understand there are watershed. We understand there are endangered species. Right. But we also understand that if we don't create a plan for the places that we can keep them, we're gonna lose them there too. Yeah. Like it doesn't like it's just like fish. Like you can go near shore fisheries, everyone knows, right? Or it has a general sense that yeah, maybe near shore fisheries are kinda reducing, right? There's a lot of fishermen, very little um recording of catches a very little recording of what's out there it's just for the near show i'm not talking about commercial but right. um that if we don't create a plan of where we're going what we want to do with it if we just let people do whatever they want to do we might end up with nothing with nothing so 
and it just makes sense that hunters are asking for this yet our department is so resistive to that ideal and um yeah they're they're totally resistive just because of the that's oh, okay they're totally resistive just because of the um yeah just because of the endangered species and all these other environmental ngos and pressures that would rather they want to control they they want to control what you do on public land right? right they don't want any animals there no and to be quite honest i, I feel like the animals are a public resource they they also belong to the public as well you can eradicate them in places it doesn't matter but in places it shouldn't hey we should create plants to keep them around because there there's a section of the po- hunting public that want them there yeah definitely and it, yeah and if we don't create a system we can't keep them that's right eradication is the alternative yeah and it's so sad that we have uh, obstruction to getting to even having that discussion i mean we've had that discussion they put it on paper but then that gets thrown away so um kind of reeling it back how how i got to how i got to meet your involvement in all this was um when we started the state game commission in hawaii the very first meeting one of the agenda items was the waianae aerial goat shooting very first agenda (coughs) item and i think it was on there because part of the charter uh, statutory language that governs our game commission is there's a section that says we will um i think it's advise the department on um, aerial shooting something 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 to that effect so i think that's why they felt it relevant to be put as an agenda item in, in our first meeting and in that meeting they told us okay we're gonna do this there's this watershed thing the water supply uh, bws board of water supply says we gotta really get goats in this area because of the watershed it's critical right and um uh there were a few questions obviously that come up because of uh, you know you're talking to a hunting commission they're a hunting related commission they don't want to see game mammals eradicated and if you're going to eradicate them well you better have a pretty decent reason why so we, some questions came up and you know one of the questions was um how when is this going to happen you know how much time uh, when are you guys going to fly and you guys going to shoot them all and um i vividly remember the leadership saying uh well within the next month or two or so I don't know. It's probably we recorded all of this, and right. I, I they didn't give us a date. I can tell you that for sure. There was no date that this is the day we're gonna go. They don't want to do that. Yeah, <laughs> but they had a date in their mind because literally, what happened? We, I don't know if you were around, but what happened was it was the week after, week after that meeting, they had the flights already. Literally, they, they just didn't want to say anything. Yeah, you just want to say anything. Yeah, and it's, I, I want part of why I do this podcast is because not everybody, right? A lot of hunters and fishermen, we're all, a lot of us are blue collar workers, right? We're, yep. we're, we're busy working nine to fives or, or six to sixes, whatever it is. And there are whole sections of the department, a whole sections of uh, environmental NGOs that find taxpayer dollars to get rid of your hunting and fishing. And they're working nine to five to get rid of it while you're working nine to five to provide the tax dollars so they can continue to do that. Mm-hmm. And you don't have a voice. And um, so part of this podcast and what I want to achieve here is that get that awareness out. There are some people like us that we take the time to go out there and and see our government, see what they're doing. But the average guy working every day, never going to get to see it. He might get rumors or stuff like that. Might be a little misinformed here and there. But I want to lay out the truth from the guys who were there, the guys who saw it. And um, yeah, they literally flew the week after. Um, Of course, there was some contention with that i've heard some stuff in the back about why or all these things but um yeah it just uh basically was a lie or half truth at first yeah. and then what i mean f- you can take it from there what's happened well, since then they pretty much snuck it by the community there wasn't much awareness <laughs> what was going on yeah um the first mission that they flew to shoot was in august the end of august i believe it was august 26th mm. and they they flew up in lulu lay they shot some goats in lulu lay then they then they came into Waianae Valley, up in our public hunting area in Waianae Kai, and they they started shooting goats up there. The day that they were doing that, we had a Waianae high school school teacher up in the mountain with one of his classes, mm-hmm. and um, his name is Dr. Michael Sturm. Oh, Sturm, yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, he actually him and his class actually witnessed the helicopter coming in, and started opening fire on the goats. And it actually turned out that they were out of their boundary when they started shooting the goats because there were set boundaries where they were not supposed to pass. Sure. They showed us a bunch of maps, yeah. Yeah, and I've actually got 
so much witnesses telling me that they came out of their boundary and were shooting goats. Uh -huh. And they really took advantage of this. You know, they were chasing the goats. They, they came into, they were not supposed to fly into Makaha. They came into Makaha, three helicopters, and they pushed all the goats around the, the mountain into the corner in the back of Wainai Kai. Mm. And that's, it took them, you know, a few hours to do that. Mm -hmm. And then once they had everything back in that corner, then they let, then they opened fire. Oh, yeah. so and maybe they didn't, they didn't have like a uh, shooting permissions in the area that they pushed them from is they is are not supposed to be thing? shooting in makaha valley oh I no see. no um they had targeted wainai kai supposedly they put an ad in the paper uh -huh. you know but not too much people read the newspaper yeah you know and it's just a small ad and um so we didn't know it was what was going on yeah. so it, to us we felt like they just snuck in and and they're they're taking away they're trying to take away our heritage, you mm. know, by, by killing all these animals, what, what the people love to go hunt. And this yeah. is their protein and their food. And, yeah. you know, so they, yeah. So they told me, I think any reasonable hunter would say that if there's too many animals in the area, that, that, that has an ecological and environmental impact, even if it's not a native landscape, right? There's erosion, whatever. Right. Um, but would you say, you know, at the time of the shooting and all that stuff that there were, I was told, like, I remember them sitting there telling me, oh, how many goats that they counted in all this Because that was one of the other questions as well. How many, well, if there's this problem, well, how big is the problem? Right. How many goats are we talking about? Okay. And what they what they tell you on that? Okay, well, uh, we've been dealing with Ryan Peralta um, oh. from the DLNR. Uh, he's state forestry. And um, he told us they did a count, and they counted 6,000 goats. When I asked him how long was this study done for to count that much goats, he told us one day. And in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, how do you count 6,000 goats in one day? It's impossible to get a correct count in one day, <laughs> you know? So they're just coming up with a phony number. Did they, um, did they report how, ma how many was, uh, was actually shot and killed in the flight? Too? They reported 156 out of Wainai Kai. Out of Wainai Kai. In, in um, I believe, three days of shooting was. One that's day pretty low for three days of that's very low yeah. <laughs> especially after um many people told me each day that they were shooting they yeah. shot over a thousand rounds <laughs> you know it, you know they say they're using marine um military accuracy i uh -huh. don't see any military accuracy out of that if you if you take a thousand rounds and you divide <laughs> it into 125 <laughs> out of three days i mean uh -huh. that's three thousand rounds and yeah. you're catching 150 animals I mean, it's really terrible percentage of shooting. Yeah, I don't, I you don't know? know. I'm not sure whether the. <laughs> yeah, I'm not. I think the animal count is reported. I'm not sure whether the um, uh, ammunition count is accurately reported. I'm not sure. So, yeah. So for the viewers, yeah, I mean, or for my listeners, yeah, I'm just just trying to suss out what we what we know for sure versus what we you know what we're kind of um, uh, maybe su subjectively uh, thinking. Right. But what we know the 150 number is probably maybe hard. That's what they that's what the department put out. Right. That's a definite fact. That's what the department yeah. put out. And I'm that's just giving super you a rough low. estimate of what people yeah. in the neighborhood was telling yeah. me. That's sad. I mean, to me, 150, you're flying around. These mountains aren't huge. Like compared to small. Big Island where they where they eradicate too. Right. Here it's like small. And if you're going to fly that many hours or whatever and only get that many, it's to me that seems like a pretty low density. Yeah, it's just it's it's really a complete waste. It, this is uh -huh. something that the hunters have been managing. Um, and they can continue managing. We don't need yeah. the state interfering and especially flying with the helicopters and shooting and leaving animals to just rot away in a mountain. Sure. And I don't know if you heard about it, but if they also said, you know, because we complained about, you know, all the animals being left in the mountain. So yeah. they said, okay, if you're interested in getting a, ma uh, a carcass, yep. we will issue you a permit to obtain a, carca a carcass. Yeah. So several of us got the permit, and what they do is... Um, you have to wait at the base of the mountain. Mm -hmm. When they're done for the day, which is, I believe it was 1 o'clock in the evening or 2 o'clock in the evening, then um, they will email you the GPS locations of the goats. Mm -hmm. And then from there, you can hike from the bottom of the mountain up to the, wherever the GPS locations are of these goats, and you could go obtain your carcass, go get retrieve your carcass, mm -hmm. which no one found the carcass because they take GPS points from the, from the helicopter. Doesn't match up what's exactly on the ground. Yeah, you don't know if you're standing right over it. Yeah. So it was completely useless. <laughs> Nobody came out with a single goat. Oh man. Yeah. 
I know, yeah, we um we've had pressure in Big Island for that. The very same sentiment, right? People have a sentiment of not wasting um resources here and maybe it's a it's a it's a very hunter sentiment, but maybe more so in Hawaii because, you know, we a lot of people live with the land and ocean resources. So, you know, uncles and aunties tell us, we don't waste. Yeah. Right? That's how they grew up. That's how they grew up. There so there was no stores back yeah. in the day here. <laughs> yeah. Why and I had one traffic late, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so they have that sentiment, and big and in Big Island, they actually they they actually do try to um they round up the sheep, they put them on a helicopter, and they bring them down, and guys pick them up, but um, yeah, here it's uh it's a little more cliffy, a little more a little different, I guess, right? But um, what was the the other thing I was gonna get at was so you know they they created this count of whatever six thousand, probably not. They actually go fly up there. They don't kill thousands. Right. Right. So it doesn't, right. it doesn't, the number, it doesn't add up. Doesn't add up. Doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make any sense, especially after um, Representative Andrea Topolo had me fly with the DLNR in their helicopter to go and um, just observe. And so how did that happen? Yeah. So I saw, uh, yeah, I saw a social media thing of, oh, this guy is up in a helicopter with them. Heck no, dude. Like Big Island, they would never take any of us in a helicopter to go see their stuff. Heck no. I mean, subjective on my part right. but i'm shocked that they actually did it for you guys here right and uh, how that how did that transpire um you know i went to a, a town hall meeting with uh, andrea topola uh -huh. and then she set this up with the dlnr for me to go so yeah fly. so they, they had a town hall meeting just because people were concerned upset. yeah they're yeah, they concerned, upset and concerned how can we be eradicating all these goats i mean the the word they used for me was eradication like we're gonna go to whatever we find kill them all right yeah at first it was eradication and then later um the dlnr had changed it to to management and then that's why at the last town hall meeting we asked them okay if it's management can you provide us with your game management plan you know and um ryan peralta from the dlnr said that they do have a game management plan and that uh he would submit it to uh Rep. Andrea Topola the following day, and she never received it. Um, her office had never rece received it. Neither did Cedric Gates's office, our other representative. Mm -hmm. um, no one's received that. I haven't received the copy. So to us, it's like he doesn't have a game management plan. There is no game management plan. You know, they're just telling us and feeding us things that they they want us to hear. But actually, in the back of in their head, it's. They want a number of zero. Their sure. management plan is zero. I would agree. You know, they yeah. want to just kill everything. Yeah. Ungulant control, you know? Yeah. I would agree. So, you, I mean, so you actually got to go in a helicopter. Yeah. And see, and what, what did you see on that on that trip? Um, what I seen was actually really scary. It was I didn't expect to see that much damage done in the mountain. And when I'm talking about damage done, I'm talking about the number of go goats that have been removed. Mm -hmm. Um. When we flew over Waianae and Makaha, we counted 30 goats total. So, I mean, super low super density. Super low yeah. numbers. The trails yeah. are all covered up and thick, and yeah. there's just not the animals like how they used to be. Mm -hmm. Very, very, very few. Mm -hmm. Very few. So, yeah, one, so when they, when they presented the whole idea, okay, we're going to aerial shoot and all these things, because of watershed was the first one. Right. And this is a huge thing. And, on, on this island just because you know a million people on a small island fine right. one of my questions and i don't um i don't live here but one of my questions because i see watershed affecting uh being the culprit f being the reasoning for eradications on, on the island i live on is i ask well is the area that you're eradicating actually watershed right and um i was, I was specifically asking them for um uh you know can you can you show me wh where Produce the watershed is? Or yeah, can can the DLNR tell me, you know, what, what is the watershed around here? And um, I was thinking, of, and they, they didn't want to give me an answer. There was nothing. They said, oh, BWS is this or that or whatever. And I was thinking about it for a little while while I was driving over here. And back uh, an administration ago, they created this uh, Rain Follows the Forest plan. It was a massive watershed plan. And basically what it told everyone in the urbanite city was that, well, if we don't save all the watersheds, we're not going to have water. You're going to die of thirst. It's over. Right. Pretty easy message for anybody that doesn't know anything to, to just jump on and understand. Right. But they created a bunch of maps, 
where there was a watershed high priority and watershed priority areas and then the watershed partnerships and i started looking at them and there's one for oahu and i want to kind of show you it if you look at the green portion right they have the you know priority watershed areas and all that stuff okay i didn't think about this while i was in that meeting but a lot of the areas that they're actually shooting in and finding animals that exist because i know a lot of these critical areas are probably fenced already right or um not all of them. Not all of them. Not but all of them. Not there's yet. okay. Yeah. Not all of them. But a lot of the areas that they are shooting them out of are probably not in the thick portion of the forest. They're probably no, more they're not. against the barren cliffs, right? Barren cliffs where there is no watershed. <laughs> They've no always water been shed. dry. Yeah. So always been dry. There's no water source at all. Yeah. So I couldn't get that answer. I couldn't get them like, well, is it even affecting the watershed? Like you, you kill these goats that don't even exist in it. Sure, maybe there's ingress, maybe they travel around and whatever. But if we know that they're always in this area, is it even is it even a watershed? Is it even a watershed affecting goat? I'm not entirely oh, sure. It's funny that you show me that map because uh -huh. when I speak to the Board of Water Supply, yeah. they say that all of our ridge lines are all watershed. Sure. That's what they say. That's what they say. So we actually caught them on something very interesting, Board of Water Supply. A few meetings back that we had at a town hall, um, Board of Water Supply came, Department of Army came, the DLNR came, and uh, Board of Water Supply handed a handout of their policies. Oh, really? Yes, and I have the copy here. <laughs> the last sentence in that policy was there should be no animal carcasses left within a thousand yards of a water source. Hmm. This is after DLNR has been flying all these missions after they tell and them go killing kill them animals within a thousand yards of a water source. So actually, DLNR is going against Board of Water Supply's policy. Yeah, wow. Well. After I brought this up to their attention, you know the next meeting that I went to a, a week later with the DLNR and Andrea Topola, all of a sudden, the Board of Water DLNR and Board of Water Supply had worked together and changed the policy all of a sudden? Sure to within 200 feet of a water source, a reduction of 93%. <laughs> now, I asked what? them, how does this happen? You know, they said they have to look into it again. They're not sure how did this, you know, what happened in the change of policy. I think DLNR just made this up. Yeah, just yeah, changed yeah, it. Sure. You know, I think it's still border water supply because 200 feet is nothing. It's a very yeah. short distance. Yeah, because like for me, it was just like, well, you have the maps, and I can clearly say that, okay, you're, you're saying this is not a priority area. This is not a watershed. We've identified that much on a map. If you want to say that the map they produce is accurate, if it's not, well, they can tell me it's inaccurate at any point in time they want to. Right. But say that's accurate. So you're telling me, like, okay, if I kill all these goats in this one area, whatever they are, uh, seems like the density was low at the time that they're talking about right. it anyway. So say 100. I kill 100. Can they tell me how much more gallons of MGD a day is that going to produce for that no. watershed? Nothing. No, not at all. It would be nothing probably. So exactly. it's like this It's this inconsequential thing. We're just doing it for the sake of doing it. Yeah. And um, this is this is something that hunters don't get to. Um, we, don't, we just don't have the voice that's as great as the environmental community, right? They got millions of dollars to, to pitch their side. Yep. Hunters don't have it, right? We're busy. But... There are clear examples where it doesn't make sense yeah. that they're just doing. I almost think they're just doing one. Maybe, maybe some of them actually just hate the goats, right? They have this idea in their mind. The goats are bad in general. But I think sometimes, at least some place where I live, I think they do it just because they don't want hunters around. It's possible. It's very yeah. possible. Um, yeah. So, yeah, after the watershed thing kind of fell apart, I remember there was a discussion. Oh, yeah, it's, um, oh, yeah, it's not watershed, whatever. Well, we're doing it. Uh, I, I was watching a line from uh, Dr. Sturm. He he was kind of pursuing it. And he came out. There was I guess they had another community meeting. He came out and said, well, they're doing it because BWS said that there's uh, poaching on their land. So to discourage the poaching, Dylan R., please go fly and kill all the goats in the land so we're not liable for the poachers that come on our land and, and shoot them. Which cost the taxpayer money. Yeah, which turns into something else completely different than what we were pitched in the public. Right, wow. And while hunters have been hunting that area for as long as I could remember, yeah. you know, and actually border water supply doesn't really hassle the hunters. <laughs> it's, um, you know, here in Makaha, uh -huh. it's just a few people that are not from this area uh -huh. that always call the DLNR 
and the water border water supply to you know call the police to, yeah, yeah there's yeah, gunshots yeah. or sure you know there's hunters walking in the back yeah. so oh boy you better send police after them you know and they're not thinking about that these hunters are actually doing the community a service mm -hmm. you know yeah it was just um it's just disingenuous that yeah we walked in with the i would told you told me his watershed and all this stuff and then i hear another thing of of poaching and then i don't know maybe later on down the line i hear this other thing of okay no no we're not talking eradication we're talking management right well what kind of management then is what you would ask let's see the plan let's see it and let's then see it nothing <laughs> nothing still nothing i nothing. mean you could put on they could say management plan zero put it on paper just say zero and then let's see where that goes right but um <laughs> but yeah it's uh it's just crazy and th this is what this is what uh hunters that uh, that get involved with trying to we're trying to conserve or, or keep some any future for our game animals in this state this is what we face all the time all the time we, you, you try to create something that might seem reasonable da -da -da, and you hit roadblock after roadblock yeah. after roadblock or they move the goalpost. yeah uh, and you know since i've been involved in this for about the past six months um I kind of feel like the DLNR is, is starting because they know I'm a big voice in the community uh -huh. and a strong voice in the community. And now they're, they're, they're kind of kind of harassing me. Um, <laughs> and it, it feels really? like they're almost trying to intimidate me uh -huh. um, because three weeks prior to my helicopter flight, sure. when I was coming back home from work, um, as I was pulling up to my house, I noticed three state vehicles parked in front of my house and uh, a tripod camera on my property in my driveway with nobody home. And they never had permission, the DLNR, to be on my property. As I pulled up to the camera, uh, a lady working for the DLNR grabbed the tripod camera, started heading what? back to her car real fast with like four other guys. I reversed my truck back to her. I tell her, hey, what the hell are you doing on my property? Uh -huh. Then all of a sudden on my driver's side, here pops up Ryan Peralta from the DLNR, uh, you know, the guy that we've been in all these meetings with, and he's like, um, Oh, I'm sorry, sir, but uh, we're just taking pictures of the mountain. Oh, hey, Puya, that's you? Uh, do you live here? And I'm like, yeah, Ryan, this is my house. Nah, do you really live here? And he knew like, I lived here, like, of oh, course. Shit, bro, I live here. How the hell do I because, know what I know? Because I live here. Yeah, <laughs> all these meetings that I go to, I write my name down, I write my address, I write my phone number, I write my email, <laughs> and he's telling me that he doesn't know that this is my house? Yeah. Oh, my God. So he hmm. actually wound up... Um, sitting in my driveway for like an hour, me and him talking about, you know, he's pointing at the mountain where they, what they want to do. They want to shoot the goats over here. And I'm telling him, no, you guys are not shooting anything over here. Uh -huh. You know, they've been eradicating the goats up Mount Ka'ala, which is the highest part of this island <coughs> for the past 40 years, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and they have that whole top fenced up. Sure. You know what? If they want to keep that the pristine forest, that's beautiful. That's fine because we don't have access up there. Sure. So I understand that, but now mm -hmm. they're coming down the ridge lines mm -hmm. and they're starting to um, personally affect the community. Sure. You know? I agree. And that's their icebox. You know, <laughs> people are eating, you know? Families are surviving yeah. off of this. I agree, yeah. You know? We, uh, any reasonable guy understands, like I, I say it again, like we, we understand that there are these areas that are sensitive and we're giving them that. Like, do that. We're, we're for that. But it's like, what the heck? Why does it spread all the way down to the ocean? Why does it spread like to every single area? It seems it doesn't matter where it is. It right. could be a damn lo on my island. It could be a freaking lava field. Right. I can't even keep animals on a lava field. Like they're gonna say, "Oh no, you can't watershed or I don't know, pick something erosion, the gravity of the earth." I don't know. Yeah, yeah. they'll <laughs> climate, find something. Climate huh? change is <laughs> they'll, they'll pick something. And they'll pick something. Yeah, everything to get rid of them. And even though that there is some duty to actually manage them for a public resource, and when we say manage them for a public resource, you know, you need an idea of what you're doing with it. Right. And they have no idea what they're doing. I mean, they, they do. No I, I would say locally, they, the local guys that care about the hunting within the department, they know what they want to do with it. But I feel like they don't get the leadership up above to do so. Yeah. Or the or the support or guidance to do so. Uh, I think the upper leadership in Hawaii, and we can talk about this too. Like the upper leadership of our department is all environmental. Yeah. It seems to me. Yeah. Um. They have their own interests in this, and it's it has nothing to yeah. do with hunting. I mean, I know that I know the chair. I've met her. We've talked. It's cool, you know. But hey, let's let's be real. I mean, she was a nature conservancy. Uh, Nature, con the Nature Conservancy, you know, the NGO group, the biggest, one of the wealthiest environmental NGO groups in in the world. 
that that runs our deal and R. Yeah. Um, do they care about fishing or hunting? I don't know because none of none of their privately owned lands they allow fishing and hunting. I think their workers can eradicate these areas. But right. um, as far as access, I don't think they provide access even on the mainland for those things. It's I think it's on their website why they don't have fishing and hunting on their on their on their lands. It's incompatible <laughs> with other uses. <laughs> Whatever that is. Yeah, whatever that is. <laughs> <laughs> but this is yeah, but this is this is this is this is the Hawaii we live in and this is this is the challenge hunters face is our leadership really bends toward that heavy environmental side. And hunters and fishermen were busy working, like I said, nine to five and nobody's nobody's out there being able to advocate for our interests. And that's that's people like you and me, man. Yeah. Like you got to work. I got to work. We got to show up in our free time to try and get stuff done. Yeah, the DLNR gets paid for it, and we do it on our on our free time, whatever free time we yeah, have, you know? sure. So, like, um, getting back to that aerial, uh -huh. when I went up in the helicopter, um, and we were counting the goats, uh -huh. I received a phone call from my wife, and I couldn't answer the phone because she can't hear me. So I just hit FaceTime. So uh -huh. I could look at my phone, and I could show her that we're up in the helicopter, and when I hit FaceTime and I looked at my iPhone, I noticed that um, the DLNR police, the doe care, was at my residence, at my house. Uh -huh. Knowing that I'm not home, again. Yeah. You're in the helicopter. Everyone I'm knows in the that. helicopter yeah. with Ryan Peralta and Jason Misaki and uh, Josiah Drury. Uh -huh. And um, Ryan Peralta had the DLNR, his police, come to my house while I was up in the air. Knowing that I'm not going to be home, uh -huh. which was really strange. Very, very strange. And um, so while we're up in the air, I didn't want to cause any commotion up in the, while we were in the helicopter because I didn't feel it was right. So I waited till we landed, and then um, we spoke in, inside the lobby. And when we walked out to the parking lot, you know, I, I, I asked um, Ryan. I actually had my GoPro going the whole time, and I was videotaping everything in the, in the air <coughs> out of the helicopter. And... Actually, I was recording everything while we were in the parking lot while I approached Ryan. And I, and I asked Ryan, I said, did you call the police to my house? And he cockily told me, oh, I don't know what you're talking about. You know? And then I asked him again, I said, hey, Ryan, did you send your police to my house? And he, he repeated the same thing. Well, I don't know what you're talking about. Then all of a sudden, he started getting mad at me and explaining um, how upset he was about this email that I had wrote to... Um, to him, uh -huh. but I CC'd um, our representatives and Board of Water Supply and his sure. bosses in it, um, calling him a liar <laughs> because <laughs> you know he's telling us that he has a game management plan, but there is no game management plan, and he hasn't provided us it, to uh -huh. show it to us. So you know, I said, you know, you're lying to the taxpayers now, huh. and that's not right, and you're a liar, uh -huh. you know. And he didn't even like that, and I believe that's why he sent the police down here to my house. You know, he said um, that I know somebody that wants to shoot the helicopter. You know, if I knew somebody that wanted to shoot the helicopter, wouldn't you send the FBI? And as soon as yeah. somebody would say that, I would figure like half an hour later, FBI and the police and everything would be at your house. Yeah, yeah. This was actually said about six months ago at the second meeting I ever went to by someone in the community other than me. It wasn't even me, uh -huh. you know? So... He was just, he's getting upset with me because I'm exposing the truth. Oh, you know? totally. And I mean, um, now he's trying to intimidate me. You know, he's trying to intimidate the hunting community, yeah. you know, which is just not right. No, we yeah. can't have that at all. And I would just you say, know? yeah, I would just say um, part, of what I, part of what I do in this podcast is to get awareness out. But, you know, we're talking about the hunter side of it. And if the department is listening, if anybody listening, because I do know, like, you know, I, I, I do what I do and I have friends, at least locally, they're listening. Um, they're, they're listening, and they're they're cool guys. I don't know the outer island uh, Dofa guys too well. Um, not all of them, very few of them. Um, Oahu, I don't know at all, really. I have very little contact with. But if they're listening, hey, you want to come on and we want to talk and talk about that side, please do so. That'd be awesome. Yeah, it'd be yeah. great. Because I, I just know, like, we're left in the dark as, as a hunting community. Our department has all these plans and all these things they're doing. Um, but they don't tell, they don't tell us. They don't tell... Or they do tell us, but in very, I don't know, it, 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 it's so hard for us to get information out, you know. But, I mean, they knew when they were going to fly. That went mm -hmm. a week after the meeting. Yep. Um, there's just a lot of half-truth, dishonesty, whatever you want to call it. But 
we need to change yeah come on and talk come on and talk to us or we, even me that's fine i don't care we I mean, need a change in the department we that's what we need and the dlnr yeah. has to has to change we need someone from hawaii a <laughs> local from hawaii that actually knows what's going on here to run the department sure um, it is a, yeah so we can talk about that politics it is an yeah. election here this year <laughs> the governor um the governor gets to decide who the chair of the the dlnr is our mm -hmm. department exactly so hey if anyone's listening for that hunters and fishermen it would be nice for once maybe to have a chair that is um i think we've had chairs that understand it but how about take an express interest in it um an express exactly. interest in in learning it all and, right. and being you know being involved in it because they're very hands off you know i don't see chair case and our stuff anymore she used to show what she doesn't anymore we just get the dofa administrator right now and i feel he doesn't give a crap what i say he doesn't give a crap what the damn whole commission says we're just an advisor David commission. Smith. yeah we're yeah, just an advisor course. commission we don't have any power voting power or whatever maybe that's something that needs to change maybe the commission needs to have voting power do you remember the last meeting i i seen you at here in oh, no, oahu I, I was there but i don't remember everything so much stuff but when david smith left halfway through the meeting oh he okay he just took off <laughs> 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 yeah when the hunters were talking to him oh okay the hunters from the community were in the meeting talking to him and he just like after that one person spoke sure i guess he felt kind of uh oh. scared huh oh maybe so he yeah. left i'm sure i mean they it's, the writing's on the wall i don't have to i don't have to be a mind reader to understand them but his this pro his objective is zero and in your areas that they're eradicating uh area shooting is zero zero and anything exactly. anything to talk differently to that is no not gonna happen or in his mind yep. so to change that or to even move that needle in any way i think i don't know i don't know what it takes on hunter side but it's it's having more of our voices aware voices we need uh, people need to, to come act, out you come know out. we need to somehow have like um some kind of rally at the capitol you know where all of us come out all of us hunters and gatherers come out I hey agree. we pull out a big wok we have the pig the goat meat the deer meat I we agree. start cooking up all the meat and handing it to the people walking down the sidewalk and to all the politicians yeah. and i agree no know, when we, they have the opening the legislative opening yeah they, that's what we need to all do all these other groups do it and i think hunters need to will but just, it's just one day we need everybody to come <laughs> together it would be mind-boggling because there is a lot of hunters and gatherers out there yeah. that are on our side sure it's just we can't get them all to unite it's just because so everybody's so busy, busy. Yeah. life you know it's um on oahu at least it's a rat race i agree you know, it's, it's <laughs> i moved away from here it's, for it's that, fast yeah. paced it's a rat race <laughs> people are so occupied with just trying to survive you know <laughs> it's quite it's really crazy yeah, what's well, the median house here is what seven hundred thousand now i think that's what i saw on the yeah. internet like six seven hundred thousand 600 when I was here. Median. This is not average. This is median. That means half of the houses are above 700,000, half of it below it. Bruh. Like, if you spend. Yeah, I don't know rent what. Rent is like two to three grand a month, <laughs> yeah. man, you know? For yeah. An average house. Yeah, so our brothers that like to hunt and fish, they're busy working. They yeah. don't have time to be sitting at the legislature, <laughs> you know, lobbying and say, hey, save my hunting and fishing. You know, hey, while, you, while you're at it, while I'm busy out here making the tax money so that you guys can continue doing what you're doing and these environmentalists can continue eradicating my animals. Hey, while you're at it, why don't you, you know, save some animals for us? No, yep. you don't have time for that. Yep. That's unfortunate, and I think, um, I don't know, people listening, maybe they're smarter than me. I I don't have the solution, but what you just said is one. Yep. It's just finding people to do it, though, right? That one day, if we could have everybody come together, yeah. would be amazing. Amazing. I mean, it would blow oh. everyone's mind away. I can tell you, dude, when we were doing the state the state game commission, and we had hunters showing up from all the islands, because it's a state thing. When any, Anytime you have a bill that's a state thing, you have to have all the island support. And when we were showing up there, they were shocked to see us. They were shocked, and the testimonies, like even the online testimonies, usually they kind of don't pay attention to those. This is how it works. To like online. Yeah, so they get all these online testimonies, and I tell people to do it. It does matter, especially when you have a massive or very controversial thing. But in general, all they do is the committees within the legislature, they just get a report at the front of it that says what groups are support and what groups are, are not in support, and then they have how many oppose and whatever. So the individuals kind of don't, they don't give it the same weight as they give the groups. So they look, what does right. the Sierra Club say? What does the Nature Conservancy say? And right. then they go down the list. Okay, well, where's the hunting groups? Right. 
oh, Hawaii Sportsman is nice. It's a small group. You know, group I kind of started and took off. And, oh, uh, Hawaii Rifle Association. That's why we had to start the Waianae Hunting Association. Same guess, thing. Same thing. Same thing. That's what they listen to. Like, yeah. th- you don't get the attention unless you have a group. Yeah. And uh, is that, I don't know if that, I don't know if that's, demo- I don't know what you call democracy when you only take a portion of people and say, oh, no, only, only these people represent the whole thing. Um, but, like I said, that that state commission bill, we had, I think it was 600-something pieces of support. Wow. And there was like, that. yeah, I don't know what was in a pop position, like not even 100, not not even close, not even 50, not even 20 probably. And um, that did move the needle. That did matter in, in places uh, in places that we had some, some opposition <laughs> to, to get it through. So, yeah, so for people listening and local hunters, definitely you got to get involved in that kind of thing. Got to. It doesn't take much. I mean, the online one's easy. You just make a comp, say support. Call your representatives, you know. Yeah. Call uh, the head of uh, the DLNR, Susan Case, David Smith. Call, Email them, you know, just email the governor. Yeah, yeah. Everybody, everybody. If everybody would do this, it would make a change. Sure. Immediately. Yeah, that or even. Yeah, and if if you don't want to, uh, if we don't know what to do, because a lot of people don't know what to do, right? Like, right. What do I say? What do I don't I know do? what to do. So, how if you can, what we can even do, even as a group, um, with my sportsman's alliance and those things. I mean, I, I should be better at it about putting messaging out that people should support, people should do. I haven't been doing that. I've just been lazy. Well, we all work too. You're working, so. man. <laughs> <laughs> you're trying to survive. Back here. to the same thing. But and you're trying to save what you love, what yeah. you grew up love, you Back know, to loving. The same thing, yeah. So. Yeah, I think that's uh, that's a path forward, and that's something that's something we need we need to do more of. Um, I, I wanted to get into you know, y- you're a rare case. Like I've been a I've been doing this for a few years, and I know a lot of guys have been doing it for many other years. But let's be real: the people who take action, like there's a lot of people who complain, but there are a few people who actually take action. What makes you take that action? Well, growing up here. You know, the goats, I s- actually survived off the goats. Mm-hmm. Um, so to see them, see the state actually trying to do away with them now, oh, it just blows my mind, and uh, I don't want that to happen. Yeah, what, what would you tell, like, say, say if there's an environmentalist kind of listening in that loves the watershed, loves the endangered plants. Well, we love the watershed, too. What would you tell them, yeah? You know, the hunters love the watershed. <laughs> we want the watershed, too. We, wanna, we want a balance, we can have the watershed, we could have the water, and we could have the animals. Uh-huh. There has to be a balance, a yeah. medium between where every side is happy. Sure. Right now, everything's going toward the watershed side, mm-hmm. and there's nothing for the hunters. Sure. So if somehow if we could get some kind of management plan going on, yeah. which takes a little bit of time to, to make, but we could get that management plan going, I think everything will be just fine. Yeah, and I'll, I'll add on to that. I would say like... It, we live on an island. We can only be mad at each other for so much, man. This That's is a it. small island. Yeah. Even if the big island is so small. So the only way we get along and the way we do things constructively is you got to come together. Got to work together. And yeah. it's so, I mean, hunter, they got to understand too that hunters, we can't show up to everything. So, you know, if you want to pull us in and, and help and help us do stuff, we got to kind of maybe after work, you know, maybe weekends when guys can actually show up to, to help because... That guy's punching the clock, can't show yeah. up nine to five. Yeah, to a lot of people, they get stuff. off work, they can't make the meetings. Yeah, they yeah can't make exactly. The meetings. I mean, I, I don't think it's, I hope it's not done by design. I hope they don't do that so that we can't show up. Sometimes I do think they do that. But I think, yeah, um, yeah, have that understanding. And I, I know hopefully, you know, um, I have a lot of hunter audience, but hopefully I have that environmental audience too, that we can fix this. Because it's not very, it's not very Hawaii style when, when we um, kind of got to do things behind the, back doors and all this stuff so that's dirty <laughs> dirty works <laughs> yeah and and me yeah it's just a, it's just a future you know i see i saw your son running around you're gonna go take him hunting yep. one day and yeah hey he's already walking with me in the mountain man oh yeah <laughs> yeah yeah if there's no if there's nothing to hunt it's kind of a moot point already right yeah we'll be bird watching yeah <laughs> I mean, not that I'm ragging on bird watching i I bird watch I've taken photos of birds, I do it all, but there's something different about about taking something home and, and using it. Like something and about actually yeah. using a resource that's very different than just looking at it. Right. And it's healthy for you. Yeah. It's organic, the real organic meat, you know? Sure, sure. So you can't go wrong. 
Yeah. And so. you got it yourself, and there's a sense of pride in that when you bring that meat home. Uh -huh. You know, and you give to your friends, you give to your family. Yeah. So That's, you know, we um over here, we, you know, we hunt so much that when our freezer is starting to get full, I, I go and I give meat to the homeless people. You uh -huh. know, I empty my whole cooler out, my whole freezer out. I give it to all the homeless. Uh -huh. You know, so nothing gets wasted. You know, we don't want to see the waste. It's just a shame. Yeah. Uh, I yeah. believe in karma. You know, you do bad stuff, the bad comes back to you. You do the good stuff, the good comes back. And what, uh, I guess another thing when we talk about kids and stuff, I wanted to reiterate, and I always say it all the time, I'm a huge proponent for public hunting. Public hunting on public land. Um, you know, I'm not ragging on it, and I never will, but hunting is, be I feel hunting is kind of becoming like this aristocracy thing, you know? Like, people are finding that there's huge value to hunting. Mm -hmm. And with that huge value, you know, you can start charging bigger dollars to do stuff, you know. Yep. I'm, I'm not against it, but what I am against is losing public hunting that is right. affordable for everyone to do. And I think, you know, when like someone like your son or maybe a, a mother somewhere out there or people who don't have, you know, the big dollars to go on these other crazy hunts, how are they yeah. going to get started hunting? They're not going to get started hunting paying thousands of dollars for a hunt, right? They're going right. to they're going to have to go to the public land and, and try to get started that way. So I know a lot of hunters out there, we, we kind of sometimes idolize or um, aspire to do these exclusive, fun, big deal hunts. But the honest truth is right. the thing that's going to keep our heritage around is, is the public is hunting the public. system. Yeah, I it's, agree 100%. It's the one that everybody can do, right? Yep. Any, anybody can walk it's in. It's free. Go in any time. Sure. You don't have to make a reservation. You don't no. have to see how much room is on your credit card, <laughs> right? No, I do. <laughs> oh, dude, man. When I apply, my wife is going to kill me. Like, I, I, I got to look like, okay, what can I apply for? Da, 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 all these things. But in the back of my mind always, I'm like, hey, I can always go on this public ground. I can always afford to do that. And I, I really feel sad for the people who um when we can't fight for those things right you know and then there's all the, some people they have the means to go do all these other things and maybe they even have the free time too those guys i'm like hey if you could get involved help out the public land guy i yeah. would really appreciate it as a, as a hunting community yeah so as we're winding down here on that i wanted to ask a question yes um you've been around hunting everything and whatever and this is how this is how I'm, i think i'm gonna start ending all my podcasts with if you could change one thing within the hunting community or hunting system that you work in, anything hunting related, if you could change one thing, what would it be? I think you start from the top. And that would be getting rid of the people that are in charge of the DLNR right now and putting people that are from Hawaii, born and raised here, that actually maybe they're even hunters mm -hmm. or gatherers. Get them and let them run the DLNR. That's what we need. From there, we'll see changes. Mm -hmm. From there, we should definitely see changes. Yeah. But the way we're going right now, it's opposite. Mm. And just losing. Um, just adding on. To, how would yeah. how would how would you think any hunters or fishermen listening? How would you think they would go about inflicting that change? <laughs> By voting. <laughs> they gotta vote. You have to vote. <laughs> you can't sit at home and cry about things. You have to get out there and vote. Sure. You need to change. You have to make the change. You know. That means voting, everyone, you Absolutely. know? Absolutely. Don't let the same system keep running it and running it and running it, especially if you don't like it. Yeah. I it, would, it's I would, time for a change, people. I would echo that. I mean, yeah. it's not just, not just the leadership, not just governor or, or um, uh, leadership of the department. I would echo that, you know, our legislature is what handles the budget, what handles the laws of this, of this state, and your local legislators have a difference, right? You you mentioned yep. uh, Representative Tupola. Tupola representative, yeah. right? Andrew Not Tupola. Senator, representative, yeah. representative yeah. yeah. And then you mentioned another one, Gates, I believe. Yes, Cedric Gates. Yeah, so. They've been both helping us over here. Sure. So, like, hunters, everywhere you live, you know, one vote, just get over that hurdle. If you're not voting, you, you need to do that part. There's yes. a lot of people that shed a lot of blood for you to go vote. And if you don't do that, I, I feel like you're kind of. Uh, shame on you. You're kind of shaming that. Yeah, yep. shame on you. Um but beyond that, get to know your local representatives. And also get to know your local DOFA. Get to know your local deal in our Yeah, definitely. Right? I mean, go yeah. to the town hall meetings, said, speak to these people, yeah. listen to what they're saying, and then speak what's on your mind. Sure. You know? Yeah. I got to, you know, I, the local, the ones on Big Island, I know pretty well. Um, 
you've had some interactions with the one here. Maybe not all positive, but at least you're there. Yeah. At least you're trying. And I'll right. be there. For everyone that I can make, I'll be there. Yeah. Yep. Okay. You have <laughs> any other um any other closing thoughts before we wrap well, this up that's here? What I can think of right now, what man. You wanna do? Yeah, no, I think you pretty much uh Okay. Yeah. Answered yeah. all the questions. Yeah, so for folks out there, I hope you had a um a little bit of insight into what um what Mr. Matla has been working with here on uh, in Makaha Valley where he lives or in the Wainai area in general and um, if you guys could um, come together and maybe you may not have to agree on everything but we can I think we can agree on one thing we have to conserve the resource that we have and there is and there is a portion of there's a portion of the government portion of uh, very powerful non-government organizations that are very influential into getting rid of that or not letting us do that so um, i think if we agree on one thing let's agree on that let's agree on conserving the resources that we have doesn't matter if it's fishing hunting anything we can eat anything we can touch uh, those kinds of things and just as much as they conserve the ones that you can't touch correct right? we yeah. spend all this time and effort on indigenous species fair. watershed you conserve that it's a big deal well how about you conserve the ones that other people actually use too it's a know? balance it's a balance it's again. a balancing game sure <laughs> so with that thank you very much Thank you for uh, having me. Putting me on, and uh, I'm glad I could um, educate a little bit. You know. All right, aloha, guys, and take care. Bye, bye. Aloha, everyone.